Hello and welcome to Oxford, Ohio, McKee Field at Hayden Park. You're watching Love and Honor live here on Chatterbox Sports. It's game three between the Miami Redhawks and the visiting Toledo Rockets. Miami looking to scrounge one game from this three-game series. Lost Friday, lost Saturday. They've got Tyler Chadwick on the mounds in the throwback unis on. Reed Mount straight along here with Luke Westpoli. And Luke... Redhawks need this one today. Yeah, they definitely do. Bats have stagnated late in the past two games of this series. And it's just taken one big inning in both games for Toledo. That was all they needed offensively. Four runs in the second inning in game one. Four runs yesterday in the fifth. Propelled them to a pair of victories here on the road. And like you said, one that the Redhawks could certainly use in this first series of MAC play. Try to scrounge out something on the weekend. Yeah, so let's take you through the Toledo Rockets starting lineup. Batting leadoff and playing shortstop will be Jerron Williams. He's followed by Garrett Pike out in right field. And the big boppers in the middle of the Rockets lineup, Owen Jackson, he's the designated hitter. Mason Sykes, he's batting cleanup and playing first base. They each have a home run in both games this series so far. Caden Konzak out in left field, he's batting fifth. Dante DiCello, the Oxford native, is at third base. He's batting sixth. Brian Fry. He's batting seventh. He's at second. Braden White behind the dish once again. And Scott Makowitz will be the anchor of this lineup. He's in center field. And we'll tell you more about Tyler Chadwick momentarily here as we are ready for first pitch. And there for a called strike. 2.01 the time of the first pitch. 37 degrees and a three mile an hour wind traveling southwest. Tyler Chadwick on the mound for the Red Hawks. The second pitch is one hopped back to Chadwick. And one out for the Red Hawks. What can you tell us about the starting pitcher for the, the Red Hawks today? Yeah, Tyler Chadwick on the mound. He's making his fourth start of the season for the Red Hawks. Transferred in from Iowa Western Community College. Previously played at West Virginia prior to that. 8.31 ERA this season. Eight and two-thirds innings pitched. Has struggled. The defense behind him hasn't given him a ton of help. He's given up 19 runs, only eight earned. Walked 12 and struck out three so far, but really looking to bounce back after tough non-conference set here in his first conference start in a Miami uniform. Garrett Pike sends one into right field for a base knock. And a base runner on for Owen Jackson, the three hole for the Rockets. And you mentioned it. Hasn't had a whole lot of help behind him defensively. He also hasn't helped himself out on the mound as he has walked 12 batters through his first few starts this year. Yeah, it's been a bit of a rough go since transferring in. Had a great year last year at Iowa Western, went 5-0, and got drafted mm. this past summer by the Cincinnati Reds in the 19th round, but still trying to find his footing here at Miami. Certainly has the talent, though. You can see that just based off the numbers and accolades alone. Yeah, he's got very good stuff. And he's a 19th round draft choice as Owen Jackson gets on top of that ball, fouls it towards the first base dugout. Owen to the count here to the left-handed swing. And Jackson, I mentioned him and Sykes have been fantastic there this series. Had a three-run shot just yesterday, which was good enough to give his team the win. He's seeing a one-two count. So Garrett Pike over at first base. Chadwick on the bump. Miami in their throwbacks, cream uniforms with the red trim. Toledo in the baby blues. They're sharp today. Variation of their typical navy. You got the gold trim on those unis. The 2-2 on this gloomy day here in Oxford. Fastball registering at 94 miles an hour on the inside called ball. A little more on Chadwick and just the, the fall he's had and the belief that there is in this dugout for the season that Chadwick can have if he can turn it around as he walks Owen Jackson to put runners on first and second. For Mason Sykes, quickly we'll take you through Miami's defensive alignment. Behind the dish is David Novak over at first base. Parker Lester, Dylan Baker at second. Over on the left side of the infield, Evan Applewick at third. Cooper Weiss at shortstop. Out in the pasture, left to right, Brian Zapp, Zach McDonald, and Benji Brokmond. So Mason Sykes steps into the batter's box. He put one off the ace hardware sign of the scoreboard at the top. 
of McKee Field scoreboard out in left center field. Two run shot in the seventh inning of game two. Getting away from David Novak. We'll put a runner on third and second. And Tyler Chadwick in trouble in the top of the first. That's been that command for Chadwick. Skipped one in there. Bit of a tough play, maybe one that Novak wanted back. Slider works away from Sykes. Ball two, and you mentioned the defensive miscues to go along with Chadwick's command problems, and those really work hand in hand as the 2-1 from Chadwick is swung on and missed to bring the count to two and two. And what I mean by that is you start sitting on your heels more when the pitcher's not finding the strike zone. When he's pounding the zone, you know the batters are going to put the ball in play. You're more ready for the ball to be hit your way. So when you struggle finding the zone, it's hard to mentally lock in when you're a position player. So those things work hand in hand. Full count here to Mason Sykes, the first baseman for the Rockets. The payoff pitch, Chadwick gets the sign. Misses upstairs, load the bases for Caden Konzak. Konzak showed he was a dangerous hitter throughout this series. And a good game yesterday that included a double and a one for three performance with a couple of walks. Definitely has that power. Chadwick trying to pitch his way out of a jam here already in the first. Corners in for the Red Hawks. Cooper Weiss, the shortstop, playing just to the left of the second base bag with the lefty swinger up, and he's also just keeping tabs on Owen Jackson out there at second. First pitch to contact misses. Chadwick already to deliver the second. Falling behind 2-0. and oh. Konzak, a nice bat at the middle of this Rockets order. They've done a nice job limiting his production in the first two games of this series. Looking to get a ground ball here on the 2-0. Kicks, deals, in there for a called strike. 94 miles an hour on the black of the strike zone. Novak gives the sign. Fouled straight back. So after falling behind 2-0, oh, knots it up at 2-2. Two two. Yeah, really nice couple of comeback pitches there from Chadwick. Just hammer the zone a bit, go after Konzak. Like you said, you'd love a ground ball, but you'd also love to just sit Konzak down here. 89 on the radar gun there as Konzak fouls it back. We'll do it again at 2-2. Two -two. So Parker Lester and Evan Applewick playing with their toes on the grass cut out of the turf. Chopped up to Evan Applewick. Only play is going to be at first base, and he holds on to it. Just popped up after that first bounce on the turf, and no play anywhere as Toledo strikes first. Yeah, that would have been a really tough play for Applewick. That disappointing end there for Tyler Chadwick. You get something hit on the ground and off this turf just takes a big hop. We've seen that play frequently in the early season, and that's just what you get when you play on turf. You see the old clips at Riverfront Stadium with the balls bouncing over the outfielders for the Reds, and the turf has gotten better, but you still see those monstrous bounces, and Evan Applewick might have had a play at first base but held on to it. 0-2 oh, is the count to Dante DiCello. DiCello struck out his final three at bats yesterday after singling his first time to the plate. The 0-2 oh, waves at it, gets a piece, sends it down the right field line, but foul. One run already played here in the top half of the first. Slider. Misses, good layoff by DiCello. 83 registered on the gun. Chadwick coming set after getting the sign from Novak. Kicks, deals, DiCello drops one out to Dylan Baker. The out at second, the out at first. 
Great job by Miami working out of trouble. Only one run played it here in the top half of the first. The four to six to three double play gets the Red Hawks out of it. We head to the bottom half here on Love and Honor Live. Bottom of the first here at McKee Field. Miami gets out of trouble on the double play ball. Now they've got their chance to get the sticks out themselves. Luke, take us through the Red Hawks starting lineup. Yeah, a couple changes for Danny Hayden here this afternoon in the final game of the series. Evan Applewick at third base will remain the leadoff hitter for the Red Hawks as he has been all weekend long. Parker Lester who was the cleanup hitter for Miami for the first two games of this series, moves up. He's still at first base. He's now hitting second. Zach McDonald once again in center field hitting third. Cooper Weiss was the five hitter yesterday. He will move up to the cleanup spot at short. Benji Brokamond, who was the two hitter for the Red Hawks in the first couple of games, will move down to the five hole. He's still in right field. Righty on the mound, that means left-handed hitter Brian Zapp finally able to get a start after coming off the bench in the last two games. When the Rockets went to the bullpen, he'll be in left field hitting sixth. Tommy Harrison, the DH, hits seventh. David Novak behind the plate for Miami for the second time this series. He will be the catcher hitting in the eighth spot. And Dylan Baker once again at second base to round out the order for Miami. On the bump for the Rockets, Matt Lolito. Lolito, not much on him to the early season. This is just his third appearance, his second start. Five and one-third innings pitched. He's given up seven earned runs, struck out two through the young season. Evan Applewick steps in for the Red Hawks, and the Lido's ready to roll. Called strike to Applewick, and you mentioned the shakeup at the top half of the Red Hawks lineup, and I think that's a, a nice switch, because through the, the young season, the two batters that I would say are having the best at bats, not, maybe not having the best results every time they come up, but continuously, working account, putting the ball in play. That's Evan Applewick and Parker Lester. So putting them at the top of the order, that's a nice change from Coach Hayden. Yeah, definitely. There's some changes definitely to try and get the bats going. Chopped over to Mason Sykes on the right side. Tough play for the Rockets infield, but Lolito covers first nice and well. It's a three to one put out to begin the bottom half of the first. So now we'll see Parker Lester. And while we have the chance, let's take you through Toledo's defensive lineup. Behind the plate, working the battery with Lolito is going to be Braden White. Mason Sykes is over at first. Brian Fry out at second. On the left side of the infield, Jerron Williams out at short. Dante DiCello at third. And from left to right, Caden Konzak, Scott Makowitz, and Garrett Pike. Toledo's Lolito. This is the first pitch to Parker Lester. You see the shift on the field. Working the opposite way. Lester is a lefty swinger, but he's not afraid to send it to left field. The 1-1 one, one from Lolito. Swung on and miss. That fastball registering at 88 miles an hour. Lester working in a 1-2 count. The 1-2 is fouled over towards the Jay Hayden Baseball Center. Down the left field line here at McKee Field. Oh, 
So similar conditions to what we saw on Friday night. Not as much wind, a little warmer. The one-two is waved at by Lester. He goes down swinging. And now we'll see Zach McDonald. McDonald sent one for a ride in the first inning yesterday. Home run to dead center. He's got some pop in his bat, this center fielder does. Yeah, best hit ball for the Red Hawks all weekend. Was that one early on in the game? Slider, 76 on the gun, misses away. McDonald covered head to toe as that ball covers him right on the elbow. And the Red Hawks have their first base runner of the ball game. Cooper Weiss stepping into the batter's box. Yeah, weakness for Lido so far this year. He's walked three guys and hit three batters in less than six innings pitched. Certainly an oddity for a guy who's making just his second start, made his first appearance out of the bullpen, and then got the start against Middle Tennessee in the sweep last weekend. Check swing from Cooper Weiss, but it doesn't even matter as it's a called strike. Owen one's the count. Miami struggling to find some offensive output with two of their everyday guys on the sidelines due to concussion. Ryland Zaborowski, the typical three hitter for Miami, has been sidelined this entire weekend. Christian Tejada, who's been in the lineup as well, not able to play. I went to the count to Cooper Weiss. White setting up on the outside of the plate. Off-speed pitch, slider. Doesn't find the strike zone, one and two. Okay, you lose a couple of really big guys, like you mentioned. Zaborowski brings just a full package to this Miami lineup. And Tejada, one of the veterans you can really point to in this Miami lineup that is largely devoid of them. One and two. Swung on and missed. The changeup gets Weiss to come up empty. So Miami leaves a runner on. We head to the top half of the second here on Love and Honor Live. Brian Fry, Braden White, Scott Makowitz, 7 8 9, two up for Toledo. In the second inning of game three, the Mac opener. Tyler Chadwick back out of the mound. Got into some hot water, but was able to come out relatively unburned. Gave up one run in the top of the first, and we have a chance. Let's had a discussion with Coach Hayden about Chadwick and the season that. He thinks he can have, you mentioned, you know, a draft choice last year. Some of the best stuff on the team. Some of the best stuff in the entire MAC, And they're waiting on him to really show it here in the spring. Lined over to the first baseman, Parker Lester. Nice job backhanding it for the first out. One pitch, one out. But, yeah, had a great fall. Had a great preseason. They're waiting on it to show here once the season finally starts. First pitch in here to Braden White, called strike. Oh, 
Oh, and two here, the starting catcher. In fact, Coach Hayden said that he's not concerned with Chadwick's start. Just because he has been so consistent and has such great talent that he's going to iron this season out. Yeah, talent on this pitching staff has been a common theme in the Hayden era. Chopper out to Cooper Weiss. Second hop throws over to Parker Lester over at first. For the second out. Think of some of the talent that's come through here just in these past few years. Guys like Jacob Webb, Sam Bachman, obviously a top 10 pick in the draft. Grant Hardwig, who's making a name for himself right now in the Mets organization. And just a lot of good pitchers that have come through here with MLB type talent. You gotta think Danny Hayden believes in Tyler Chadwick to maybe be a professional type of guy. Yeah, it's not just the talent, it's the frame, right? Yep. Six foot five, 225, a strong talent. As Scott Makowitz steps up to the plate. Two knows the count. Showing bunt. They have the shift on Makowitz with Evan Applewick playing in over at his usual third base position. A lot of small ball for Makowitz this weekend. A lot of speed. Called strike. Bunt singles, stolen a couple bags. You mentioned it, old school small ball type player. He's the one in this lineup that you're not expecting to put it in the gap. You're not expecting that. He's just looking to get on and do it all with his legs. The payoff pitch. Flared into shallow right center field. Benji Brokemond. Scott Mc, Zach McDonald coming in to make the play. Brookmond calls him off for the third and final out. Easy inning for Tyler Chadwick in the second. Red Hawks come to the plate here in the bottom half. And welcome back to McKee Field at Hayden Park. The Red Hawks are in their throwbacks, the cream unis. As we're going to see Benji Brokemon, Brian Zapp, and Tommy Harrison do up in this bottom of the second. Now, Luke, Miami 2 and 13 on the young season, but they are undefeated at home in the creams. It's a good omen. It is a good omen. Took game three against Siena last week. Benji. Waits the first pitch in there for a called strike. Benji Brookman, typically the two hole on this Miami starting lineup. Got bumped down to the five slot. One and one the count. Lolito, the righty, delivers a pitch to Brokemon, hits it on the ground, out to Brian Fry. Scooped up, thrown over to Sykes for the first out. So the problem that Miami has had on the mound this year 
is similar to the problem they've had at the plate, that first batter. It is so important to get, when you're in the field, to get that first guy out. To start with an out, don't allow the offense to really get the groove going, and vice versa, they've been unable to consistently get that leadoff guy on. Yeah, you looked at when they had the success yesterday. The second inning when they plated that run, got the leadoff guy on, and then just couldn't buy anything afterwards. Zap pops one up over towards the third base dugout. Out of play. One and one's the count. Zap, the lefty swinger, gets the start against right-handed pitching. Steven Krause, we saw him in game one and two against the South Pauls from Toledo. Zap takes the 1-1 one -one for a ball. Misses up and away. Zap crouches in that left-handed batter's box. Keeps his hands right around his chest plate, the 2-1. You don't see that a whole lot from lefties. Just the lower hands. Three and one's the count from the Lido. And that's a walk. Miami has a base runner with one away here in the bottom half of the second. So we'll see Tommy Harrison, the designated hitter. Another left-hander. Got the start behind the dish in game two. Trying to get something going here in the bottom half of the second. Not had a great series. 0 for 7. Zap out and moving. Harrison chops it out to the shortstop. No play for Jerron Williams. Harrison not the fastest base runner, but was able to leg that out as the hit and run moved Jerron Williams to cover second base, and he had no play on the designated hitter. Yeah, that's right how you draw up a, a hit and run, right? You pull the defender in the opposite direction. That just made it a really tough play for Williams to make, and it buys you a base hit. So now we'll see David Novak. See if he can get out of his funk. All-conference selection a season ago. Sophomore. Had a hit in each of his last two starts. Good time for a hit right now. Want to know the count to the starting catcher. Alito comes set, checks on the runner. So ball two on the violation. First pitch clock violation of the weekend, I believe, yes, right? Yes, it is. It took too much time. Working a lot quicker on the 2-0. Novak all over that 2-0. Fouls it right towards the third base dugout. Novak awaits in the batter's box. White lining up on the outside. Lolito misses over the heart of the plate, but David Novak pops that one up in the infield. It's an infield fly rule. And Brian Fry will have it regardless for the second out. So it comes down to the nine hole. Dylan Baker, two on, two away. As Novak's letting Baker know what he saw at the plate. And you can see that Novak was disappointed. Got a pitch over the plate. Just got underneath it. First pitch to Baker, misses outside, 1-0. Oh. Yeah, it really felt like the at-bat was Novak's for the taking at 2-0. Oh. Leave one over the plate, a favorable count later on, and it's a tough way to end it to pop that one up. Lolito comes set. Checking on Zap out at second. Zap's got some speed out at second. Base knock should score a run. The 
1-0. Sent for a ride down the left field line. It's trailing. It's fair. Bouncing up against the 332 sign out in left field. One run is plated as Dylan Baker has a stand-up double. It's 1-1. One to one. That ball was barreled up by Baker and tailing away in left field from Konzak. He got maybe a little better of a kick off the wall that might have played another run in addition to the one that he got, but you'll certainly take the RBI double from your nine hitter and bring it back to the top of the lineup. Evan Applewick, a guy who can certainly get you on base, maybe extend this two out rally. Applewick takes the first pitch, off speed, change the pace, 77 mile per hour. Change up, freezes Applewick, it's 0-1. Harrison out at third, Baker out at second. Toledo still shifting to the left side of the infield. Even with two runners on, the slider is taken for ball one. For the first time this series, Toledo jumps out to a lead. Miami's answering back here in the bottom half of the second. One and one to count to Applewick. Called strike, and he finds himself in a one-two hole. If Applewick can find some green out in the outfield, he'll plate two runs and give Miami a 3-1 lead. The one-two from Lolito. Kicks, deals. Applewick all over it, but foul. The change up. See if Lolito comes back with a heater up. The one two. Another change up. Doesn't get Applewick to chase. It's two and two. Now if you're talking pitch sequence here, this would be a good time to, to try and run one up, or at the very worst, work the outside of the plate. Back-to-back 77-mile-per-hour change-ups, and Lolito likes his off-speed. And you see White lining up on the outside, and there's that fastball. Froze Applewick, but Stephen Linton behind home plate said not good enough. That was outside on the trackman. So run it full. The payoff pitch. Up and in. Nice at bat from Applewick. That's just what you want from your leadoff guy. Really good frame there on that 2-2 from White behind the plate. Thought that it might get him the call on a pitch that just missed the true zone. But you bring up a guy like Parker Lester, who we mentioned has had some Good at bats throughout this season. That's a great at bat from your leadoff hitter and another opportunity with the bases juice for Lester. Lester takes the first pitch. Fastball misses on the outside. And yeah, it was a very challenging 2 2 pitch. You know, rule of thumb when you're calling pitches, you don't call anything on 2 2 that you wouldn't call on 3 2. And they challenged with the fastball, just missed the plate. And Parker Lester is ahead in the count with the bases juiced. Last weekend, he came up early in the ball game against the Siena Saints. Bases loaded. He sent one out to left center field, cleared the bases. And that led to a Miami win. Coming up in a similar situation as he fouls one off the top the, of the screen. The steel screen, it bounced all the way back onto the field. Felt like Lester was going to go swing in there. Lolito on the 2-1. White asking for it down. Called strike. Fastball on the track. Man missed the zone, but Linton said it's a strike regardless. 2-2. Two -two. East right back up the middle. Brian Fry gets it on the second bounce, throws it over to Mason Sykes. Well positioned, the Rockets were. And it looked like Lester might have had a base knock, but all for naught. Miami plates one run on the Dylan Baker double. 
We're all knotted up as we head to the top half of the third here on Love and Honor Live. Top of the third here at the key. Top of the order. Due up for the Rockets. Reed Mouse drone along here. Luke West Poli. Luke. We've seen a similar story through the first two games. Miami gets on the board early. Has a short lead. Today it's all knotted up. I think we'll see similar here in game three. I'm not sure it's been a little bit different by series standards here on this Sunday with Toledo jumping out to that early right. lead, but yeah, only time will tell. It's just a matter of, I think, if these Red Hawk bats are gonna continue to get some momentum through the middle innings of this game, something that they didn't really have, at least to finish the job in the past couple of games, you think, especially back to that Friday game, had base runners at times to try and get back into that one, just. We're never able to push anything across with some situational hitting. Well, it's clear that they're missing some big bats in their lineup. Yep. Obviously, you mentioned Zaborowski in the middle of the order. And Christian Tejada is a nice bat towards the bottom half. But that can't be an excuse. As you head into game three here, just trying to scrap one out, trying to avoid the sweep. 2-1 here to Dron Williams. Waves at the slider. Two and two. The key has been the middle innings. It's been the difference maker. Jerron Williams hits one hard at to Dylan Baker, and what a play. Gets it off one hop, backhands it from his knees over to Parker Lester. And we mentioned Chadwick hasn't had a whole lot of help from his defense. He got some help right there. Oh, yeah, that's a really good play. From your transfer, Dylan Baker delivered at the plate with that double earlier on. He's doing it himself right now for the Red Hawks on both sides. And he comes right back with a fastball in the strike zone. 0-1 to Garrett Pike. Another ground ball. This one slips by Baker. He was moved to the right of the field with a lefty up. And a base knock for Pike, his second hit of the ball game. Yeah, two of them hit in almost the exact same spot. That one on the ground after the first one was more of a line drive. But like you said, he was just shaded Dylan Baker a little more towards the right side, allowed that ball to squeak through. Owen Jackson at the plate as the first pitch to him is to the backstop. Wild pitch moves Pike in scoring position. And this has been the other struggle for Miami in the early season. Hanging a zero after you score a run. It is so critical to keep that momentum in your favor. We'll see if Chadwick can get out of trouble. The middle half of this rocket lineup and a runner on second base. Sharp slider, misses the zone. 2-0 to Jackson. We mentioned Jackson's three-run home run yesterday, which was good enough to put the Rockets over Miami. And insurance big fly back in game one in the ninth inning. The 2-0 misses inside, 3-0. Not the end of the world. 
you set up the force out here and just pitch around Jackson as a whole. But the problem is now you put two runners on for Mason Sykes. Yeah, there's no break in this part of the order for Toledo. You walk a guy who's a threat, another guy comes up who's a threat, right? right? Feed off one another. Sykes walked his last time. Runners on first and second. Chadwick checks on the runner. Misses. And they're going to go talk with Chadwick. And you can tell David Novak, the catcher, just feels a little more uncomfortable behind the plate. Chadwick's missing by a lot right now. And you can tell that just by how much he's having to reach, right? He's lined up on the inside, having to reach over to the outside of the plate. And you do that when there's runners on base. Like you're gearing up to block the ball. You're gearing up in case someone's running. And you just don't get as comfortable getting be, being able to put a knee on the ground. So Chadwick just missing his spots right now. And we showed it at the top of the broadcast. Through eight and two-thirds innings coming into this. Chadwick had just three strikeouts in 12 walks. A four to one walk to strikeout ratio. The 1 0 misses to Sykes. It's 2 0. And Sykes is going to be sitting and taking a hack here on the 2 0. Misses on the outside. 3 0. Seven straight balls to the middle of this rocket order. Back to back walks. And they'll load him. You don't know if he's just pitching around Jackson and Sykes right now. He's walked both of them twice in each of their plate appearances, but regardless, he's now loaded the bases twice with the middle of this Toledo order up. So Caden Konzak steps in to the batter's box. He had that high chopper, which brought in a run. And a wild pitch is going to bring in a run here. So two to one. First pitch, wild pitch to Caden Konzak. The force is off at the plate. We'll see what Miami does defensively, and it looks like they're not going to try and get the out at home. Middle of the infield playing back. Parker Lester playing back. So the only one going home is Devin Applewick. Chopped. One and one. So breaking up the nine straight balls. Caden Konzak offers. Patrick Mastrian just got rushed into the Miami bullpen as well. He's getting up and ready. The 1-1 one, one misses on the inside. Konzak. Choking up on the bat awaits the 2-1 offering, which they're going to say misses. According to the trackman, that had the zone. But when you're missing as frequently as Chadwick is, you don't get the benefit of the doubt. Chadwick comes set, kicks, deals, another walk, will load the bases. And now we'll see Dante DiCello. Dante DiCello had a 4-6-3 double play, which concluded the first inning. Got Miami out of trouble. DiCello in his last four at-bats, three strikeouts and a double play. Breaking ball, and there for a called strike. DiCello talked to Linton behind the dish, making sure that's the bottom of the zone. He declared it was. Misses on the outside on the 94 mile per hour fastball. Jackson on third, Sykes on second. Konzak at first, one away. 
for the starting third baseman for Toledo, Dante DiCello, and he's ahead in the count. The 2 1. In there for a called strike. Two and two, the count. Chadwick kicks, deals. Breaking ball misses. According to our trackman, both the last two pitches were well out of the zone, but the second was closer than the former. The payoff pitch to Dante DiCello. Swung on and missed. And DiCello goes down. Big strike out there for Chadwick. Yeah, it really feels like a sigh of relief. You're obviously not out of the woods yet, but it felt like you were just kind of slipping backwards and to be able to get that out and also, importantly, not walk a run in. And there's a ball that bounces six feet before home plate. Novak can't glove it. And another run is plated on a wild pitch. Yeah, you really, if you're the Red Hawks here, want you feel Chadwick to get out of the inning. Just depends on how long this is going to go. No bones about it. That is a wild pitch. Called strike. Brings it to one and one. Oh, your wild win, your catcher can't even feel comfortable behind home. Infield shifting to the right side of second base. Applewick staying home with two away. Brian Fry lined out to Parker Lester his first time at the plate. Two runs have already scored here. It's a 3-1 ball game. Fry. Two hopper to Dylan Baker. He'll flip it over to Parker Lester for the third and final out. But not before two runs are played at both on pass balls. It's three to one. We head to the bottom half of the third here on Love and Honor Live. Bottom of the third here in Oxford, Ohio, 3-4-5, due up for Miami. I'm Ray Mouse, joined along here with Luke Wes. Holy. And Miami, after knotting it up in the bottom of the second, gives up two in the top half of the third. But we'll see what they can do with the middle of their order up. Matt Lolito out for another inning of work. Miami is threatened. See if they can scratch a couple more across. Yeah, threatened in that last inning, got a run. Almost had one, maybe two more on that final ground out by Lester. Just got caught with a shifted defensive alignment. Hit it right to the second baseman, Brian Fry. And bunted Zach McDonald right towards Lolito. He had to move towards the first baseline. He flips it over to Mason Sykes. And one pitch, one out for Miami in the bottom half of the third. Interesting decision to see McDonald, the three-hole hitter, try to lay one down here in the third inning. After the long inning in the field, you'd rather work some 
some counts and try to stay in the dugout as long as possible. And now Cooper Weiss, his first pitch swinging, pops one up in foul territory. Mason Sykes looking to lean over the dugout wall, the bullpen wall rather, but doesn't come up with the play. So put a strike on Cooper Weiss. He struck out swinging his first time around. And you mentioned that you'd like to stay in the dugout for a while. You lay down that bunt, and then you go first pitch swinging, but you catch a break. And now he's trying to bunt away from the shift. Alito doesn't field it cleanly, but on the bare hand, flips it over to Syke for the second out. You have your 3-4 up. Both trying to bunt away from the shift, trying to get it past the Lido, both unsuccessful. Yeah, that was a little closer. It was a good play by Lido, but yes. <laughs> Been a quick inning, quick two outs already. So what they were trying to do is because the second baseman, Brian Fry, is to the left of second base bag, and this is chopped over toward Dante DiCello off his heels, makes the play at first. One, two, three, quick innings as Benji Brokman can't beat out the throw from DiCello. We head to the top of the fourth. It's three to one here in Oxford. Welcome back to McKee Field at Hayden Park. 3-1 our score, and you just missed a meeting of the minds by the umpires. And they reaffirmed that Benji Brokman was out at first base, but for the next three innings, West Poli will take you along for the ride. Luke, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Reed. Four pitch inning in the bottom of the third for Matt Lolito and the Toledo Rockets that included a pair of bunts from the three four hitters in the Miami lineup. And so, the Red Hawks back out into the field rather quickly here. And for Miami, we are gonna see a pitching change as the day is done after three complete innings for Tyler Chadwick, and they will bring on Patrick Mastrian. Yeah, Patrick Mastrian, 10.5 ERA. This is his fifth appearance on the season, it's only pitched in Six innings, but he struck out 11 batters. But six innings pitch, six walks. That's been the MO for Miami this year. Also seven earned runs. They're going to ask him to get a few innings. Kind of a side-winding delivery comes out of the three-quarter slot from the right side, typically indicative of some run on your fastball and a slider that works away. So he will come in here in a game led 3-1 to one by Toledo after a struggle in the third inning from Tyler Chadwick. Just couldn't get out of his own way at times. Limited it to just two runs though to keep it a small deficit. Rocket stranded two in scoring position. Braden White, the eight hitter to lead off for Toledo. That was the first pitch straight back. You get a new arm on the mound and you're facing the bottom half of the order. It can't be stressed enough how important it is just to get these first two outs, just to get your feet underneath you here coming into this ball game. The one missed away. Yeah, there's that slider. You know, typically when you have that three-quarter arm slot, you, you get a little bit of run on your fastball that goes into the batter, and then you also have a really good opportunity to get some spin on the slider that goes away. Ripped up the middle, took a deflection off the glove of Mastrian, and Baker tried to scoop it up 
off the turf would have been a Jeter-esque play over there behind the second base bag. But can't make the transfer. So it'll be a base hit for Braden White and the leadoff man aboard for Toledo. Believe it or not, that's actually the first time in the game that the leadoff man has gotten on base for the Rockets. And now you're going to see a sacrifice opportunity for Scott Makowitz. Not seeing the ball well. He's got a lot of speed. He's going to lay it down. There it is. It's a good bunt rolling down the line. It's picked up at the last moment and thrown wide over at first base. Into right field. White moves to third. Makowitz has to stick over at first. A late decision there from David Novak to try and fire that one over and get the out. And Makowitz ends up on first base. That puts him on the corners with nobody out. So Novak did two things wrong behind the plate there. First off, a little bit of indecision getting to the ball. You've got to make the decision quicker before you get to the ball. You can't teeter-totter around it, then quickly make a decision, and you'll have an errant throw when you try to rush things. Secondly, when you're a catcher getting a bunt down the third base line, you've got to reverse pivot. You don't horseshoe around it in foul territory coming back into fair territory. You trail the ball, you plant your right foot, and you reverse pivot. It's a quicker process, and it's easier to make the throw to first base. So the scoring decision there is a bunt single for Makowitz with an error that moves White to third. So they're on the corners for the top of the order in Williams. A two straight strikes thrown from Mastrion. Williams 0 for 2 on the day with a pair of ground outs. Fought off. Don't want to get to this next part of the order here. And yeah, nice job by Toledo. We mentioned how important it was for Mastrian to get the 8-9 guys out. But the bottom half of the Rockets order, keep applying pressure to Miami. 1-2 count now after the miss. Two through five hitters for Toledo. Eight plate appearances, eight times on base. Here at Pike, ready and waiting on deck. One, two, again fought off on the right side. So he'll see a lefty hitter in Garrett Pike coming up from the on deck circle. As of right now, Mastrian continuing to battle here with the leadoff man, Williams. Runner goes. It up in the air on the right side. This is going to trail out of play. And it will just get over the fence beyond the reaches of the ballpark. Count remains 1-2. Williams yesterday went 1 for 5. Had a single in his first at bat. Was also 1 for 5 in game 1 of this series. 1-2 nearly got away. Novak reaching out. Need a strikeout here. Need it. Can't let them put a ball in play, get a run across. I mean, you'll trade a run for a double play, but I don't think you're going to get that with the speed of Williams and Makowitz. 2-2 Two -two ripped up the left side. That's a fair ball, and it's going to get all the way into the corner. Makowitz on his horse. Zap gets to it and left. Makowitz coming home and heading into third, sliding in safely on the relay. It's a triple for Jerron Williams. Makowitz was scoring all the way. We've seen his speed plenty of times this series. They had no shot of getting him home. The real question was whether Jerron Williams was going to get the triple slides and save. Jerron Williams hasn't had a whole lot to show for his weekend. You know, hasn't had a whole lot of hits, but he has put nice at-bats together. Finally sends one down the third base line and gets a three-bagger to show. First triple of the season as the infield comes in for two-hitter Garrett Pike. Just the second triple as a team for the Rockets. Troy Sudbrook, who hasn't played all weekend, had the other one. And Jerron Williams with extra base hit number five on the year. 1-0 runs in on Pike. And don't look now, but Owen Jackson on deck. Mason Sykes in the hole. Still nobody out here in the top of the fourth. And this one punched out to deep left field. Zap retreating, has to leap up at the wall. It's going to get over his head. 
and bounce over the fence in left. A ground rule double for Garrett Pike. No extra base hits for the Rockets leading into this fourth inning. A pair of singles to start it off and now back to back from this top of the order. And now you're looking in the Miami dugout. Some movement into the bullpen. What up, 2-2? Didn't see who got the call to go get hot. But Mastrians faced four batters, four base hits. Owen Jackson now at the plate. These three four hitters for Toledo, he and Mason Sykes on deck have walked in all of their plate appearances. Each guy has been up there twice. Wano snapped up high, 89 miles an hour on the gun that time, and Jackson ahead 2-0, getting ahead in these counts has really allowed these Toledo hitters to hop on Mastrian later on in these at-bats. 2-0, cut and a miss. Middle, middle there at 90, blew it by him. Still a hitter's count here for the designated hitter, Owen Jackson. He's already scored a run in the game. And a 2-1 finds that low and in corner. Similar situation again here, Reed in a 2-2 count. Really feel you need that strikeout. Red Hawks have three on the right side of the infield. Pull side for Owen Jackson. Now you're just trying to get that first out. You just want to see a one underneath the out on the scoreboard. Outside there to fill the count up. Still nobody gone here in the fourth. Rockets double their run output with three already here in the inning. The payoff taken in the air, center field, backtracking McDonald, stepping in now at the warning track. He'll come around it and make the catch. It's a bluff tag there from Garrett Pike as the throw comes into third. And Miami finally gets that all-important first out and able to keep Garrett Pike on second base now with Mason Sykes coming to the plate. Very nice job by Zach McDonald tracking that ball beautifully and getting behind it to be able to make the throw towards third if he needed to. Didn't even give an opportunity for Garrett Pike to, to take third base. So now Mason Sykes in with a runner in scoring position. So he fouls the first pitch back, Red Hawks Corner infield in normal spots, middle infield over holding the runner on second. And a good pitch on the outside part of the zone there to make it 0-2. Sykes has been a thorn in the Red Hawks side this weekend. Two extra base hits yesterday, got intentionally walked in his final at bat. 0-2, up high. Try to get him to chase on the 0-2. Good leave. You change the eye level, you change the speeds, now comes that slider low and away. Held off on the right side, keeps the count at 1-2. Back to back heaters against Sykes. Surprised they gave him something that challenging over the plate. One ball, two strikes. A long look at second from Mastrian. This one popped up, shallow right field. Could be trouble coming back from second though. Baker will make the catch over the shoulder. And it's two straight retired for Patrick Mastrian. He get through the hardest part of this lineup. After giving up four consecutive hits, you see three, four, you start looking down, all right, how bad is this going to get? And then you get Owen Jackson to pop up, you get Mason Sykes to pop up, but a really nice job by Dylan Baker of making a tough play there. Had to completely turn his body around to get underneath it. And first pitch in there for a strike on Caden Konzak. He's one for one on the day, single and a walk. Was planted on second base in the last inning when it came to an end. The runner on second and two gone. Okay. 
Wonder now with the movement up in the Miami bullpen, they got another righty out there throwing how long Mastrian's gonna go. You mentioned in the last inning read when they brought him in, they'd maybe like him to go a couple innings. Well, luckily for Miami, they haven't used a whole lot of pitchers. I think just two pitchers in, in the first two games. I yep. don't have my scorebook in front of me. So only four arms have been used to this point. So you kind of have the whole staff to piecemeal nine innings today. One, two, up high. You know, only two guys out of the bullpen for the Red Hawks coming into this game. You do have two midweeks coming up. Got Northern Kentucky on Tuesday, Louisville on Wednesday but get a day of rest tomorrow. 2-2 Two -two outside. Both those games on the road for the Red Hawks before they return home for another conference series next weekend against the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Payoff fouled away by Konzak. He'll golf that one out towards the Withrow Starbucks. Count remains full. Nastrian has gone two thirds of an inning. And make it one full. Called strike three on the outside half to Caden Konzak. Four straight hits to start it off for the Rockets. And three down in a row following that as Patrick Mastrion gets out of the inning. Rockets extend their lead though as the bottom of the order gets on base and the top delivers. Jerron Williams with a two RBI triple. He would come in to score and the Rockets double their run output at 6-1 as we head to the bottom of the fourth here on Love and Honor Live. Six one Toledo on top of Miami here in the bottom of the fourth inning from McKee Field. Luke West Bully joined by Reed Mouse alongside. Three runs in the top of the inning for the Rockets. The Red Hawks went to the bullpen. And the 8-9-1-2 delivered for Toledo, plating three runs to extend this lead out to five. Largest lead they have had in any game this weekend. Red Hawks will look to chip into it. And the six hitter, Brian Zapp, to start things off for Miami. Zapp walked, came around to score the lone Miami run in inning number two. Red Hawks right now with just two hits. 1-0 crushed into right field, going back. This one is foul. Twisting away from the pole. Zap got all over that one, but just pulled it a little too hard. And he'll return to a 1 1 count. If I'm Miami, you're just looking to not get all five back, right? You don't need all five here in the fourth inning. You just got to have these long at bats, make Lolito work, and just have nice at bats at the plate. 1 1 curling into the outside corner called strike two. Scratch, claw your way all the way back from a five run deficit. Swing and a miss, got a piece into the glove of White. And it's a strikeout to begin the bottom of the fourth for Matt Lolito. More than anything, you just can't lay down. You gotta have some fight, gotta show some fire, showing that you can get back into this. 
and it comes one at bat at a time. Tommy Harrison next up has one of the two hits for Miami. That one will catch the top of the zone on him for called strike one. There's one thing that especially in non-conference play the Red Hawks had, it was a lot of late inning fight. Mm -hmm. Look in a series against Georgia Tech, North Alabama. Obviously you wouldn't be incredibly pleased with how the results of those games went as Harrison smokes one down the line. This one's gonna be foul. Fell behind by a wide margin in a couple of games in that Georgia Tech series, once against North Alabama and clawed their way back late in all of those games with just a lot of run production yeah. yep. and just rallying later on. Hasn't been as much the case this weekend. 0-2 for Harrison, reaches for it, and he pokes it out into right field for a base hit. It's a start, long turnaround first for Harrison to draw a throw. But a good piece of hitting there from the Red Hawk DH. He's two for two on the day. And that puts a man on for David Novak. Yeah, after an 0 for 7 start to the series, nice job at just flaring one over into right field. You know, he had that, that chop base hit on the hit and run his first time around. And see if Miami can get a couple guys on base. It's about scratching and clawing your way back down from five. Novak popped out the second base his first time up. Alito working that outside corner for strike one. Three on the left side of the infield for Toledo. Saw the Red Hawks bunt away from that shift two times in the last inning at the plate. McDonald and Weiss were both thrown out by Lolito, the pitcher. 1-1 to Novak, swinging. He laces this one up in the air on the right side, coming over as Pike near the line. He'll make the catch. Novak underneath it just a bit, pushed it to the opposite field. But Pike with the easy play for out number two. Dylan Baker delivered the RBI his first time up with a double. Only extra base hit so far for the Red Hawks. Back to the plate now. Rockets will remain in their same defensive formation on another right-handed hitter in Baker. Good leave there by Baker. You don't want to put on the take. Take first pitch. But if they're going to swing at a first pitch, you better be for sure that you're going to hit it well. Bounced foul. Danny Hayden gets out of the way. Red Hawks have been punished a bit for first pitch swinging, it seems like, in this mm -hmm. series. No doubt. Seems like it's definitely hurt them more than it's helped. Yeah, you're at the midpoint of this game, too. You're just trying to, to work Lolito, try to get into the bullpen. Bouncer over to second, and it will be picked up by Fry, who is right behind the bag. And his foot already on second when that ball entered the glove. That will retire the side here in the bottom of the fourth. Tommy Harrison breaks up what would be a 1-2-3 inning, but still not a lot of offense for Miami to show for it as they're down 6-1. We head to the fifth. Six one here at inning number five from the key. Luke West Pulley, Reed Mouse alongside. Patrick Mastrian back out onto the bump for the Red Hawks for the second straight inning. Got touched up a bit in inning number four, gave up a three spot 
as the Rockets extended the lead out to five. And an unproductive inning for the Red Hawks at the plate in the bottom of the fourth. Bottom of this order coming up for the Rockets, Dante DiCello to start. Yeah, we're right back where we were last inning, right? Mass train getting a fresh inning. Got to work on the bottom half of this order. Got to get ahead. Got to get that first guy out. Get some confidence underneath you, and you're facing a guy who hasn't had a good weekend in Dante DiCello. And DiCello at the plate. Had a decent first game, went one for three, walked and scored a run, but has gone cold since. It's made up for it defensively really really good at third base this weekend he's made some really nice plays over there you know a true shortstop played shortstop at iu southeast before transferring over to toledo baden high school grad fouls it off to make it one two mentioned his ties to baseball his baseball family that he came from just an all-around athletic family in general his dad long time phys ed teacher at Talawanda High School. Former basketball coach. Yes, sir. They installed a light at their old house on top of their basketball court so they could practice at night. That's the <laughs> type of family that they are. 2-2, Two -two, cut on, got a piece into the glove, though, behind the plate of Novak. And it's back-to-back -back strikeouts dating back to the last inning for Patrick Mastrion. Yeah, that's five strikeouts and six at bats for DiCello. And the lone strikeout, the non strikeout was a double play. So tough sledding right now for Dante. Brian Fryo for two. Watches the first one miss on the inside for ball one. It's Mastrion looking to find some rhythm here. He's retired the last four after giving up four straight hits. Even the count at 1-1. Astrion, four saves last season and 19 appearances for the Red Hawks. Native of Indianapolis. 1-1 one, one missing up and away. Two balls and a strike. Committed out of high school to play at the University of Michigan. Redshirted his freshman season there before transferring over to Miami. Wave and a miss there from Fry. Some familiar faces now on the University of Michigan staff to these Miami Red Hawks. Yeah, yeah. Tracy Smith taking over as head coach. 2-2, two -two, cut on and missed. Fry goes down swinging. That's now three strikeouts in a row for Patrick Mastrion. And there's two gone. Once again here, Reed, after a bit of a shaky first inning, like we saw with the starter, Tyler Chadwick, much better here in inning number two for Mastrion. Yeah, looking very sharp, getting the first two guys out. This is where you can kind of hop on Toledo, where they might be sitting around, you know, they feel comfortable with a five-run lead, and you can get some easy outs. Just got to get back in the dugout, get the sticks out, and start scratching your way. And it all starts with getting out number three here at the bottom half of the order in Braden White. He got things started in the last inning for Toledo with a single. Takes a big hack at the 1-0. Scored Toledo's first of three runs in that inning was driven in on the two RBI triple by Jerron Williams at the top of the order. White fouls this one up into the screen. Both teams went with similar looks behind the plate this week of playing what you could say is their number one guy on Friday and Sunday and subbing in their number two in the game yesterday. One, two count. And White Pushes that one to the right side. Yeah, it's so rare. I mentioned it in yesterday's broadcast. I have a 27-inning catcher. And Tommy Harrison started in all three games now. He designated hitter here in game three. But for a guy to sit back behind home plate and catch 27 innings in a weekend is just so rare at the college level. Makes you grow in admiration for the catchers and the, and the pros that catch yeah. 140 games, 150 <laughs> games over the course of a year. They get their Sundays off, and that's it. 2-2, Two -two, grounded up the middle. Big gap coming over from short is Williams, and he makes a nice play. Smooth over there to first as he finds Lester for out number three. 
clean. One, two, three inning in the top of the fifth that the Red Hawks certainly could use. We'll see if it translates to the plate when we come back. Love and Honor Live returns next. Clean inning in the top of the fifth for the Red Hawks. Coming back to the plate now as they've been a little bit cold through the past couple of innings. Seven of the last eight retired for Matt Lito in the Toledo Rockets as they lead 6-1. Here in the bottom of inning number five, officially halfway through the final game of our series here on this Sunday. Top of the order for Miami, Evan Applewick looking to start fresh for the Red Hawks. 0 for 1 on the day, grounded out to first base in his first at bat. Was walked in inning number two. Toledo, would you guess, shifted on him again. <laughs> Three on the left-hand side of the infield for a right-handed hitter in Applewick. Man, if I'm looking to build a rally, there's no one I want to lead off an inning more than Evan Applewick. Just consistently puts good at bat after good at bat together. Probably the best at bat of the game for the Red Hawks was in that second inning. He came up in a big spot for Miami mm -hmm. and was able to Work that walk to load the bases. Nothing really came of it for Miami, but it was in a big spot. It was down in the count early on. Worked his way back. Got a huge walk. He's just consistently seen five, six, seven pitch at bats. You chart those things as a team. Quality at bats, quabs as they call them. And Evan Applewick just consistently doing it. 2-2, two, two, and this one lined into left field. Konzak's got to step back on it. That'll drop in front of him for a base hit. Waited so long, he's worked the walks. Evan Applewick had a double yesterday, and finally with that base knock, his first single of the series. Here you go. You got Parker Lester up, and I mentioned it. There's no one in this lineup I'd rather lead off an inning. Evan Applewick, if I could plug one guy to lead off every inning, it's Evan Applewick every time. Just a methodical approach at the plate. And Lester, a good guy to hit behind him. Swing and a miss for strike one on the first pitch. You mentioned pregame when we were talking about these lineup changes. That's one that you really felt positively about moving Lester up from the cleanup spot into this two hole. Yeah, there's a lot of debate amongst coaches on. Grounder over to second. Will they be able to turn this? No, it's just a pump fake. Lester grounds into the fielder's choice. Yeah, rolled over right there. But there's a lot of debate on how to build a lineup, right? I mean, you even hear Mark DeRosa, who's currently the manager of Team USA, he, he debated on how he was going to structure his lineup all the time. I'm a believer in your guys who put the best at-bats consistently, working counts, getting on base, and then also can hit with a little bit of power. Have those guys up at the plate as often as possible. Put them at the top of the order, and that's what I like the changes of today. Evan Applewick, I love his approach at the plate. Parker Lester's number two, and then getting to Zach McDonald, who's got that pop, can bring him in. I love the changes to the lineup today. Applewick 
crushes this one to deep left field. Konzak slowing up at the warning track and he will make the catch. Just maybe a hair too high there for McDonald off the bat. Konzak has seen that crushed gravel out there next to the fence quite a bit this weekend. And the Red Hawks just keep trying to put one over his head. Yeah, McDonald, that's not the first time and it's certainly not gonna be the last time that we see him come just short of a home run. He's got that power, just put it too high up in the air. You know, that old joke in the, I believe it was the first major league movie, too high, too high, what does that mean? Well, there, saw it right there, too high. Cooper Weiss at the plate ahead 1-0. Two gone here in the bottom of the fifth. And Weiss barrels one up out to left field. Konzak going back, he looks up, and this one's off the top of the wall. Lester gets the wave sign. Konzak took a while to field that one. The relay home is a pump fake. Lester slides in head first, helmetless. And Miami claws one back at RBI double for Cooper Weiss. Love the decision to send Parker Lester there. Could have been a bang bang play at the plate. And you know, he could have been thrown out, but that's an aggressive decision by Coach Hayden over there at third base. You're trying to, you know, just breed a little bit of energy in your team right now. Cooper Weiss just short of getting the big fly. We saw him line drive home run last week against Siena. Almost had another one right there. They're seeing the ball well here in the middle half of the order. Makes it a 6-2 game. Puts another guy in scoring position now for Benji Brokmond. The pitch runs outside on him. For ball one, Toledo playing Brokemon straight up. That took a while for Konzak to field and left because it was hit off the top of the wall and he was playing it like it was going to bounce way back into the field of play. As that misses upstairs for ball two. And it took an awkward bounce and actually off the turf went back towards the wall and he had to pick it yeah. off the base of the wall. It took him a mighty long time. It could have been a bang bang play like you said at the plate if that was fielded cleanly. Instead, an easy score for Lester. Brokemon gets underneath it in foul territory. Sykes over to it in front of his own bullpen. He'll make the catch for out number three. But the Red Hawks able to get one back. An RBI double for Cooper Weiss. Drives in Parker Lester. And Miami is one closer as we head to inning number six. All important read, as you mentioned. Hang a zero after you score a run. We'll see if the Red Hawks can do it when we come back on Love and Honor Live. Top of the sixth here from Oxford. Toledo on top of Miami, six to two. And Patrick Mastrin retaking the mound for the Red Hawks. Austin Blackmore up and moving in the Miami bullpen. Yet to start throwing. 9-1-2 hitters due up for the Rockets after a 1-2-3 inning and an efficient one at that for Mastrion in the fifth. Called strike one on Scott Makowitz, who's one for two on the day with a bunt single. Oh one, this one's turned on and sent flying out of play on the right side. That's the most pop we've seen out of Makowitz probably all weekend. A little bit of pop in that bat. Let's see if Mastering can keep it rolling. Ahead 0-2 here. Try to get Makowitz to chase. Ashtrian works from the stretch. Swing and a miss. 
Good spot there from Ashtree, and then Makowitz goes down via the strikeout for the first time today. Flip the lineup card to the top of the order, but a good way to start here for the Red Hawks. Reed, they get that first out. Yeah, most importantly, Mastrian, after giving up hits to the first four batters he's seen in his relief work, has now retired seven straight. And now you get back to the top half of the order. Keep it rolling. See if you can hang that zero. Out straight back on pitch number one by Williams. Applewick came in on the green turf at third base. Other than that, Red Hawks in their normal spots in the field. Outfield shadowing a little bit, ever so slightly, to the push side. McDonald in center, just to the right of that M on the center field turf. A reacher there, waving a miss to make it 1-2. Two. two Williams, who had the two RBI triple that blew this game wide open for Toledo in the fourth. One, two, look out, and that caught a piece of him. Just got away from Astrian. Clipped yeah. Williams. Yeah, it's a tough, tough go. I mean, you retire now seven straight batters, and you get the leadoff guy, Jerron Williams, who burns you the last time. You get ahead in the count, just lose grip of the ball. And it rides in, and now you got to face two, three, four, and a deadly two, three, four, and Garrett Pike Jackson and Mason Sykes. Garrett Pike, three for three, two runs scored with a pair of singles and a double. He was four for five yesterday with three singles and a double. That coming after he struggled in game one was 0 for five. Runner goes, pitches outside, throw is high, gets into center field. And Williams will stay put on second as it's fielded quickly by McDonald. But he got a good jump, and that moves a runner into scoring position for the hot bat. Yeah, Williams was seven for eight coming into this series on stolen bases. Miami hasn't had a whole lot of success in putting down runners, trying to advance. Nashria now behind on Pike 2-0. And he laces that one right side, but it drops foul. The big Owen Jackson waits in the on-deck circle. We mentioned no breaks in this lineup from one through five for Toledo. Two one, bunt squared. Pulled back by Pike in a three ball count. Got to come at him here. He does so, and it's fouled off on the left side. Yeah, just had no no options with Owen Jackson and Mason Sykes on deck and in the hole. You got to constantly just pound the zone. Make Garrett Pike hurt you. Don't let the big boppers do it. Three, two. High ball, four. So no hits given up since the four straight to start the outing from Astrian out of the bullpen. But two free passes now, and Owen Jackson to the plate with a pair of runners on. Yeah, clean baseball's the name of the game. Limit free passes, limit fielding mistakes. Chopper on the ground, not fielded cleanly by Lester. He has to go back to the pitcher, and Mastrian able to get the out. Tougher play than maybe it looked based off where it came off the bat. But the Red Hawks will take it. It does move the runners up, but now two gone here in the sixth. Really nice recovery by Parker Lester. You can get befuddled there. You don't field it cleanly. You're fielding it on your backhand. It hits off your heel. Stay with it. Don't rush the play. A nice job by Mastry and getting over to first, covering his position. Two in scoring position for Mason Sykes. He's 0 for 1, popped out to second base his last time up. And middle, middle on first pitch. He'll take for strike one. Yeah, that's one Sykes is going to want back. And 
You mentioned middle, middle. That's right down Broadway. Got away with one. Oh, one hit in the air right field. This one is curling and it will get out of play. Takes a high hop off the walkway along the outskirts of Hayden Park. And Mastrian's ahead 0-2 here, looking to get out of the inning. Full throwing now for Lawson. Blackmore has been doing so for the last five minutes or so in the Miami bullpen. As Mastrian looks to close out the outing, maybe with a bang, foul back by Sykes. Nothing in two. Pitch again fought off. I'm not giving him anything to hit here. I don't like the idea of spoiling pitches, but you just can't with, you can't give him anything close. You go low in the zone here after you've gone up a couple times? Yeah, slider low and away. That's what he did, strike three. <laughs> Mason Sykes goes down, a pair of strikeouts in the inning. And despite a couple of base runners for Patrick Mastrian, he likely will close out the day with a zero hung up in the top of the sixth inning. Maybe a little bit brewing here for the Red Hawks here in inning number six as we head to the bottom. Miami looking to score for the second straight inning. We'll see if they can when we come back. This is Miami Baseball on Love and Honor Live. Six two our scores. We're here in the bottom of the sixth from McKee Field. Red Hawks feel like they may have the momentum on their side. They get a run in the bottom of the fifth inning. And then Patrick Mastrian escapes something of a jam in the top of inning number six. Ryan Zapp to lead off for Miami. 0 for 1 of the day, struck out his last time up, but did score the first of two Miami runs with a walk. That brought him all the way around in inning number two. Zap, the veteran for the Red Hawks, brings some pop in that bat. And a first pitch breaking ball misses way up high. I can't imagine Lolito's leash is going to be too long in this inning. Going to be very short, four run lead, no problem with really making him work here. The golden rule of thumb when you're managing a ball game is if a pitcher's pitched a nice ball game, don't let him lose it. 1-1 one, one here to Zap. Foul back. Righty working in the Toledo bullpen. So that means that it's good news for Ryan Zap. He'll likely get to stay in the lineup here and probably hit one more time. One, two, popped straight up, middle of the infield. Little to the left, Williams at short is underneath it and he'll put the squeeze for out number one. See what Tommy Harrison can do. Had a base knock his last time, had an infield single his first time, see if he can keep it rolling. Two for two on the day for Harrison. Strong day at the plate. Oh, 
Lays off on the first pitch. Guy that Danny Hayden has been very high on, Tommy yes, Harrison. A lot of potential. You know, true freshman playing in a Division One program doesn't happen every day. Just a bit low. But he's, he's earned it. Now he's getting a lot of opportunities to be a mainstay in this lineup. Good count for something here. Went swinging, lifts this one up on the left side. This is going to get out of play. Landing on top of the hitting tunnels in left. Two balls and a strike to the DH Tommy Harrison. David Novak awaiting in the on-deck circle for Miami. Two one pitch missing upstairs. Harrison trying to reach base for the third time. Three one. And he drives this one back to deep right field. Pike is retreating into the gap at the wall. He'll make the catch. What a swing from Tommy Harrison. This is a big league ballpark, Luke. It, 384 to right center field, 340s down the line, 400 dead center. Just hit it to too deep of the ballpark and just not enough underneath it. Also thick air here today. Tommy Harrison seeing the ball well. Man. So two outs here in the sixth inning. David Novak up to the plate in the first pitch in on the hands. If you give Miami in each of these games probably 50 more feet to a lot to any at-bats they want, they would have hit maybe six, seven bombs this weekend. Right, put it to the warning track. Big league ballpark. You know, this is encapsulate baseball just so well. Tommy Harrison's day at the plate. He sends the ball 384 feet on a line out to right field. He's retired for the first time today. Infield single and a bloop single his last time up. As they say, that's baseball. It's been a good day for Harrison at the plate. 2-1 to Novak. He reaches down low for it, puts it into the Miami dugout. You'd like to see David Novak get on base here, struggling to begin the season. Just try to get a little confidence in your starting catcher. Gone to the opposite field twice, popped out the second, flown out to right. This time he'll just jam it up the middle. That's going to get over the head of the shifted Fry at second base and down into center field for a base hit. Yeah, nice job by Novak. Got it in on the hands. Just punches it out to center field. That's strength right there. So for the first time since his very first at bat of this series, David Novak aboard with a base knock. Dylan Baker up now. Lays off the first pitch, catching atop the zone for strike one. RBI double in the second, hit into a fielder's choice in the fourth that ended the inning. Three on the left side of the infield for him. And he hits it there, but gets it through for a base hit. Into left field, fielded by Konzak that'll hold up David Novak at second base. Baker hits it right into the shift, mm -hmm. but able to squeak that one in between Williams and DiCello. A ball that's hit well on the ground. He's two for three now on the day. Yeah, this is a good time to take Lolito out. Miami's just seeing the ball very well against him right now. You look through the last nine hitters that have come up. Evan Applewick with a single. Uh, Parker Lester hit the ball well. Zach McDonald puts one on the warning track. Cooper Weiss just feet away from a home run. Tommy Harrison feet away from a home run. Besides the Benji Brokemont and Brian Zapp infield pop-ups, every single batter in the lineup squared up a ball against Alito the last time around. You got to think that's the end of his day. Like he's been pleading his case, and they're going to let him go for maybe one more. And this is a dangerous spot, too, with this type of lead. You're up by four. You got two runners on. And maybe the Red Hawks' most disciplined hitter at the plate in Evan Applewick, guy who's reached base in his last two plate appearances. This is where you tell him, this is your last batter, regardless of outcome. First pitch swinging, and the breaking ball gets by Applewick. Yeah. 
Oh, one off the plate. Good leave. Really good leave. Never even thought about that 0-1 slider. Three on the left side of the infield. DiCello playing almost directly behind third base, just about a step off the line. And again, that outside pitch. White did his best to frame it in the zone, but he's not going to get the call. And Applewick ahead here, 2-1. This might be something here, Reed, in this count. Grounded left side. They're going to go to third, and the runner is out. Just a half time. Oh, goodness. An interesting decision there by Williams to go to third with that. And he beats the runner in Novak by a split second to get out of the inning and allow Lolito to close his outing out with a zero. Red Hawks really had something developing there with that two out rally, but they can't push anything across as we head to inning number seven. Six two Rockets here on Love and Honor Live. Six-two ball game. New man on the bump for the Miami Red Hawks, trailing Toledo by a six-two score. Close us out this weekend. Reed Mouse. Six-two our score. Lawson Blackmore taking the rubber for the Miami Red Hawks, native of Van Wert, Ohio. Lawson, a senior, pitched an inning, started the game against Wright State earlier this week, gave up two earned runs, and now getting a chance to shine. And conference play. Trying to hang another zero here in the top half of the seventh. Close the book on Patrick Mastrian. Lawson Blackmore. You mentioned it off broadcast that I'd be happy that Blackmore is up there. So my first job out of college, I was news editor at the Van Wert Times Bulletin, and who was the ace pitcher for the Van Wert Cougars? None other than Lawson Blackmore. So a nice little connection there. Funny enough, there's another athlete that I covered. There was only three high schools in Van Wert County that I covered, all D4 to 5 and 7, whatever. And the other athlete from Van Wert County is from Crestview High School up there, Javen Etzler. Oh, wow. Yeah. On the basketball team. Yes. So Caden Konzak leading off for the Rockets. Dante DiCello, then Brian Fry. Miami has hung two zeros in the previous two innings. They're down four here at McKee Field. Konzak, one for two. Base hit a walk, a strikeout. One misses. Blackmore was a very good basketball player for the Cougars as well. Big, tall. He's listed at six foot five, 205 pounds. Led the Cougars to a, their first state run, I believe, three decades on the mound when he was a senior. Sub one career ERA. They lost to the eventual state champion. Shamanad Julian Eagles. 2-2 Two -two here to contact. Mm -hmm. 
misses, will run it to full. Blackmore coming set. Takes a deep breath. Fallon straight back, hitting contact. 92 on the gun. So I give a lot of praise to Evan Applewick and Miami's lineup. Kaden Konzak and Garrett Pike both have a similar approach at the plate. Just work counts so frequently, as you're seeing right now. Another foul ball. Blackmore just unable to put down Konzak. And all you can keep doing when you're a pitcher getting these long at-bats, especially against the leadoff man, is just keep pounding the zone. Konzak chokes up, bounces one to the right side of the infield. Evan Applewick, who's shifted over, fields it, throws it over to Lester for the first out. So though he hit it to the right side of the infield, it's a 5-3 to three put out. Don't you love the shift? <laughs> Being banned at the pro level. Although there's some still ways that you can work around the shift yep. in the MLB. You can rearrange the outfielders. But Dante DiCello steps up to the plate, takes the first pitch for a called strike. DiCello with a day to forget. Blackmore kicks, steals, breaking ball, misses low and in. Two strikeouts and is grounded into a double play all the way back in the first inning, which stifled a Rockets rally. Blackmore looking to add on to it. DiCello hits one off the end of the bat. Cooper Weiss running over to the middle of the field to make the play. One hops, Parker Lester scoops it off the turf for the second out. This middle infield defensively for the Red Hawks has been good today. They've made some nice plays. That's a nice pick over there at first from Lester, but to even get to that ball, it's another one that's hit up the middle there at Weiss that I really thought off the bat was going to be a base knock. Brian Fry steps into the batter's box. First pitch taken. Fry, 0 for 3. Squared one up his first trip to the plate, but it was gloved quickly by Parker Lester. A line out. Struck out his last time as he's chasing that 1-0. Bryce had varied success through this series. Looking to get a base hit here in the top half of the seventh. A shift to the lefty. Blackmore bounces one. Let's move the count to two and one. Fry has the whole left side of the field with Evan Applewick playing with his heels on the cutout if Fry was to butt one. Sends one down the right field line. Extra bases for Brian Fry. Rounding first, heading for second, and I'll tell you what, he coasted into two for a double. If he was running out of the box, he might have had a triple there. Yeah, that ball was pretty firmly set in the corner. Rokemon had to go the whole way to get to it. Not only that, but it took kind of an awkward hop off the wall. Brokemon couldn't get it in cleanly. And Fry was jogging out of the box from the rip. So a two-out double gets Toledo threatening. And now we'll see the starting catcher, Braden White. White scored back in the fourth. Led off that inning with a single, came around. Started the rally. Back-to-back -back benders puts him in a well. Blackmore gets the sign. From Novak, comes set. Kicks, deals. White fouls over the first base dugout. We'll do it at 0-2 once again. Blackmore kind of has a rock to his step when he comes set. See his front leg bouncing before he fully comes set. 
Just a rhythm thing, similar to basketball player. Free throw routine. As he misses up and in, couldn't get on top of the slider. Enfield playing straight up against White. Scott Makowitz on deck. Breaking ball over at the top of the zone. Popped towards the right field line. Parker Lester takes three steps back. And gloves it for the third and final out. It's stretch time here at Hayden Park. 6-2 our score. You're watching Love and Honor Live. Bottom of the seven, six to two, our score. Reed Mouse on the call with Luke West Bowley. Luke, we got two, three, four due up for the Red Hawks. And a new arm to tell you about. So it's Parker Lester, Zach McDonald, but Matt Lolito, his day is done. Momentarily, we'll tell you who's on the mound. But Parker Lester, fielded into a fielder's choice, came around and scored his last time up. Looks like it's, yeah, Kyle, piece of check. The right-handed reliever. But it's do or die time. Not quite yet, but you'd like to see scratching and clawing your way, as I mentioned earlier. Getting another run on the board. Miami scratched one across in the second, got another in the fifth. Find themselves in a four-run deficit here in the bottom half of the seventh. Yeah, four runs in an inning, not out of the question, but just given what the Red Hawks have done offensively this season, you'd make it a lot easier on yourself to just maybe try to split this up a little bit, at least get some momentum going your way. Felt like you had some, kind of lost it in that last inning. He's a check. Gets a first pitch strike to Parker Lester. This is his fifth appearance on the season. Eight and two-third innings pitched. Three earned runs. Nine strikeouts. And he's got Parker Lester in an 0-2 hole. The 0-2. Lester leaves. Just missed the zone. It's a breath of fresh air when Parker Lester comes up to the plate as they pretty much play straight up against Lester besides the outfield. The one-two misses up and away. You can get your quote-unquote steps in if you're an infielder just moving around in the shift. Dante DiCello constantly moving between the left side of the infield and to the right of second base. The two-two misses upstairs. It's run full. And I think if you want to get exhibit A as to why the shift works. You'd probably look at all the games this weekend. The Red Hawks have just not been able to beat it. Parker Lester sends one in the air. Underneath it is Konzak, about 15 feet before the wall for the first out. And they have, I mean, that's why those spray charts are so important at the college level is you see exactly where they frequently put the ball. And Lester, when he sends one in the outfield, very rarely is it to the right side of the field. Constantly trying to go backside. 
So McDonald steps in, cover head to toe on this cold day. Flew out to left field his last time around, just feet away from a home run. Swings at the 1-0, up at the top of the zone. Like it from the rip, comes up empty. Sends another one for a ride out to left center field, looking up. McDonald with another home run. And more importantly, that's a left field Tavard home run over the left field wall. Makes it a six to three ball game. I think the fans happy. That is one the Red Hawks certainly needed though, especially after you lose that first out to Lester. That was a blast. And that left, wheel, that left field wall has seen some work both on it and over it from both sides this weekend. And what about the day that McDonald has had? Just comes up his last time, a few feet short. He's like, all right, I've ironed it out. Ran into the baseball center, got a couple reps on bench in. All right. Her WTP calls from the dugout. Makes it a three-run ball game. Cooper Weiss steps in. He doubled home a run his last time at the plate. One and one the count to the starting shortstop. Infield shifted well to the left side of the infield. And Weiss is a pool hitter. He sends one for a ride out to deep left field. Konzak's underneath it. Didn't have to move too far. Catches it for the second out. Weiss more than really any other batter in this lineup. He lofts the ball. You talk about launch angle a lot. You hear that buzzword. Much to the chagrin of older baseball fans and non-analytical people alike. But there is something to be said, and Cooper Weiss sends it in the air more often than not. He's also near the top of this Red Hawks lineup in slugging percentage, so there is a bit of correlation there. Benji Brokmond steps in the batter's box. He's looking for his first base knock of the ball game. Yeah, I feel that he's maybe due a bit on the weekend, has just one hit. Miami's seeing the ball well here as the game progresses. Parker Lester sends one out to deep left field. Cooper Weiss does the same. Zach McDonald with the home run. Yeah, against these righties, given the position that you're in down three runs, I think you still feel decent in the spot about where you're at with your bats. Right. Inch and ever so close to that three-run deficit. At bat by at bat. The 2-2 two -two to Benji. Chops one out to Jerron Williams. Going to be a tough play for the starting shortstop. He delivers a strike over to Mason Sykes. Benji Brookman's speed not enough to get the first. Miami scratches across a run thanks to the big fly. The solo shot from Zach McDonald. We head to the top of the eighth. It's 6-3.
Miami's shown a little bit of life. It's a three-run ball game. Six to three, Lawson back. Blackmore out for another inning of work. Scott Makowitz, Jerron Williams, Garrett Pike do up for Toledo. We mastered it along here with Luke West. Holy, Luke. Can start to see a little momentum getting back on the Red Hawks side. It's something, right? We saw it a little bit. We felt after that fifth inning, you had a pretty solid sixth as well to get out of it. And then the bottom of the sixth, not able to get anything generated. But, yeah, I mean, it's now or never for this Miami team. Really need a zero at this point. You got 9-1-2 in the order due up. Starts with Makowitz. First pitch to Makowitz, misses inside. Can't stress the importance enough of keeping Makowitz off the base paths. Got to get the nine hole out. Jerron Williams is seeing the ball better, and then you get into that really tough part of Toledo's lineup. But Blackmore falls behind to the center fielder. 2-0. Evan Applewick coming in, three feet on the infield cutout. Called strike to Makowitz, taken all the way. Wouldn't be surprised at all if he had the red light. Now he's going to be swinging. Saw a little bit of pop from Makowitz's bat on the foul ball his last time up. I said it before, I'll say it again. He gets his extra base hits via singles and then Steal in second base. He was looking maybe for two and one right there with that swing, but. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. Makowitz goes down. And now we'll see Jerron Williams. Williams tripled and came around and scored back in the fourth inning. Was hit by a pitch, but they were able to keep him from scoring back in the sixth. Nick Vardavis up in the Miami bullpen, left-hander. Maybe coming for the ninth. Chopped. Foul. Williams hasn't seen a whole lot, before that triple, of course, hadn't seen a whole lot of success at the plate. Has played fantastic in the field for Toledo. But starting to see the ball a little bit better. And you can take that back with you. On I-75 up to Toledo. You always appreciate finishing a series strong. Blackmore on the 1-1. Williams just throws his hands at the ball and flares it into center field before McDonald could come in to make the play. And when I mean threw his hands at it, just... Didn't have his back behind him at all. Yep, for Blackmore, just a bit unlucky there. You throw that pitch, Trackman said, maybe nine inches outside. Mm. Just throw the hands at it. Not only do you get that pitch outside, you get him to chase too, but he just no doubt catches a piece on the end. Garrett Pike, first pitch swinging, pops it up in the infield. Over on the left side, Evan Applewick loses it for a second, but moves to his left and gets the second out. You always get so worried when you're watching a ball game and the ball's popped up in the infield and the infielder suddenly makes some movement, right? Right before the ball comes down and lands, but Evan Applewick... Calmed everyone's suspicions and makes the play. Jerron Williams fakes the steal, called strike to Owen Jackson. Jackson came around and scored back in the third inning, has walked twice. He's working on an 0 for 2. The 0 1 offering from Blackmore. Keeping close tabs on Williams. Two away in the top half of the eighth. Williams up and running. Jackson fouls it back. Mm -hmm. 
I was never much of a base stealer, but I can tell you, if I ever did try and swipe a bag and they foul it off, you're not too happy at the batter. It's always when you get the good jump, too. Right. Got a jog on back, like, ah, I had that one. It's a good spot to get a momentum strike out here. 0-2. Oh, Owen oh, Jackson sends it for a ride out to deep right center field. Does he have his third of the series? No. Rattles off the bottom of the wall. Benji Brokman gets it in. And a run will score in the form of Jerron Williams. Jackson coming up with some insurance runs in the top half of the eighth. After he was thinking strikeout and just left that one over the plate. Yeah, that's the wrong guy to put one in the sweet spot for. Jackson hitless on the day until then, and he makes Blackmore pay. The thing about Owen Jackson this series is every one of his hits have been quote unquote clutch, right? The ninth inning insurance run in game one, the three run shot yesterday, and that double right there. It seems like when Toledo is either running on E and just needs a little bit of a boost, Jackson comes up with a big swing. And now we'll see Mason Sykes. Mason Sykes 0 for 2, walked twice as well. 7-3 our score. Blackmore comes set. Misses, up and in. <laughs> the 2-0. Another breaking ball that Blackmore can't find the strike zone on. Not the end of the world if you, if you walk Mason Sykes here. And I think that was the M.O., the whole time. Have a free base. Give them nothing but off-speed pitches. 3 0s in there for a called strike. But I can't imagine too much of a challenge pitch here on the 3-1. Sykes is aggressive at the plate. You can get him being a little too eager. Fouled back. A fastball on the outside half. 92 on the gun. Jackson out at second. The payoff pitch from Blackmore to Sykes. Swung on and miss. Got him to chase. The breaking ball. But not before one run is scored on the double from Owen Jackson. Back to a four-run ball game. You're watching Love and Honor Live. Cameron Zinski on the bump for Toledo. 7-3, our score. As we're going to see Brian Zapp, Tommy Harrison, and David Novak do up for the Miami Redhawks. Six outs to give Toledo their down four runs. They've scored just seven runs this entire series. Need four to tie, five to take the lead. Can they get it done here in game three? And game three's have a reputation at the college level for being a bit chaotic at times. And I think Miami, Coach Hayden, and the whole roster would 
due for a little chaos here in the bottom half of the eighth. He loves some chaos. Best case, maybe it goes your way a bit. You could claw your way back into a game here late. Zapp has come up to lead off an inning a lot. This is now the third time. Toledo, I guess, used up all their left-handed pitching in the first two games of this series because it's been all righties now with their third guy out of the bullpen, Cameron Sinski in. Zapp's due for something to start the inning, though. Zinski, his fifth appearance on the season. 1.59 ERA. Though it's in brief work, five and two-thirds innings pitched. As many walks as strikeouts in those five and two-thirds innings, and that's three apiece. Zapp awaits the 1-1, one -one, takes the fastball. Zinski throwing in the low 90s, 92 miles per hour. It's been kind of a combo starter closer at four strikeouts in five innings against the Red Hawks last season. Spent his 2021 year in New Orleans mm. at Tulane. Nola. A 3-1 offering from Zinski. In there for a called strike. And here comes the shift. And here comes the payoff pitch. Zap pops one up into shallow left field. Jerron Williams backpedaling underneath it, setting up a campsite. He'll have it for the first out. His second time popping up to Jerron Williams, the starting shortstop. Now we'll see Tommy Harrison. Harrison sent one for a ride, just feet short of a home run his last time up. Seeing the ball well today, two for three. First pitch swinging, dribbles one up the middle. Fry moving to his right, gloves it, throws it over to Sykes for the second out. And a quick two outs for Miami in the bottom half of the eighth. David Novak. First pitch taken. And a great job by Zinski. Knowing that Harrison swung at the first pitch, figured that at the bottom of the order, Novak might have the red light on. Just getting ahead. And Novak pops one out. Two away, two strikes. <laughs> David Novak sends one for a ride out to left field, though Konzak doesn't have to move too far before he makes the third and final out of the bottom half of the eighth. If Miami's going to want to come back, they're going to have to do it in the ninth. Stay tuned. You're watching Love and Honor Live. To the top of the ninth we go, 7-3, our score, Nick Vardavis, the southpaw in relief for Lawson Blackmore, the fourth arm for Miami in this game three, as Toledo just wanting it away from taking the sweep. Reed Mouse joined along here with Luke West, Foley. McKee Field at Hayden Park, the venue of this one. 
do up for Toledo. Caden Konzak, then Dante DiCello and Brian Fry. Vardavis on the season. This will be his sixth appearance. He's got a one and two record, a 14.63 ERA. So he's given up 13 earned runs in his now eight innings of work. Not a lot of strikeouts, eight strikeouts. Looking to hang his ear on the top half of the ninth. Vardavis, a true freshman. Five foot 11 lefty. Now he's done, I mentioned the season that he's had and he's got a very high ERA, but most of that work came in just two appearances. His debut against Indiana where he gave up eight earned runs and then earlier this week where he gave up five earned runs against Wright State. And his other work, some zeros. We're gonna do that right here. Lefty on lefty, Gonzag versus Vardavis. The 2-0. Vardavis struggling to find the zone. And in his two bad appearances this year, that's been the case. Walked three against Indiana, walked three against Wright State earlier this week. Trying to come all the way back from a 3-0 against Caden Konzak. Called strike. See if he can come back on the 3-1. Tom Konzak, I'm taking all the way. Chopped over to Parker Lester. Konzak bails out Vardavis for the first out. Nice job coming back after throwing the first three, missing the zone, getting that first pitch strike, and then getting the ground out after that. Yeah, especially to your first batter. It can be a little bit rattling to come out of the bullpen like that and go 3-0 right away. Good job to battle back. Now he's earned his chance to face the bottom of this Toledo order. First pitch, strike to Dante DiCello. Grounded out to Cooper Weiss his last time around. Made Weiss make a nice play over the, the heart of the field. Vardavis comes back, gets ahead 0-2. Oh Vardavis comes set. The 0-2 bounces about 45 feet. Bounce so short that it bounced up and hit David Novak in the, the face mask. The cello awaits. Breaking ball, 77 on the gun. The cello fouls it straight back. We'll do it once more at one and two. Enfield playing straight up against the cello. Misses on the outside. Nice challenge there on the one two. See he comes back here at two and two. We invite you, if you're watching the stream, please like the stream. It helps us grow, and you can feel free to subscribe. The 2-2. And for the second time in the series, DiCello loses the bat. We saw that in game one, and, you know, there's a common theme, a lot of moisture in the air. Yep. It's been a humid weekend. We saw rain on Friday. We saw snow today, but we talked before the game, somehow you would assume mm -hmm. the rainy day would be more pleasant than the snowy day. It was not the case at all. Snowy day was technically colder, but today it's felt a lot nicer than it did on Friday. The 2-2. Chopped. Evan Applewick's going to have to come in and make a play. Throwing on the run. Throws it high. Luckily, he's got a tall first baseman in Parker Lester. 
A 5-3 to three put out for the second out here in the top half of the ninth. Now we'll see Brian Fry. Yeah, it was the wind on Friday that was made it seem blistering cold. Not a whole lot of wind today. At first pitch, it's about three miles an hour. Right now, the center field flag barely blowing. A gust of up to 30 miles an hour on Friday. In fact, we only did one camera setup on that broadcast just because the wind was blowing them down. Had no other option. Bartovic gets ahead of Fry. Misses in the turf. One and one. So Toledo wasn't the only team in the conference to take the first two games. Eastern Michigan had 2-0. and They took the first two games against Akron. Meanwhile, Kent State got a clean sweep. They're playing Northern Illinois. It's a Red Hawks opponent next weekend. Yep, right here at McKee Field. 1-2, Brian Fry off the end of his bat. They shift with two strikes, and Fry almost pokes it down the left field line, but it trails foul. A good amount behind it, considering there wasn't a lot on that swing. He just kind of threw it out there, got it off the end of the bat, like you said. That ended up popping out to mid-outfield before it got out of play. Swung on and missed, and you heard an expletive from Brian Fry. On that strikeout, we head to the bottom of the ninth. 7-3, our score here at McKee Field. All right, 7-3 our score in the bottom half of the ninth. Cameron Zinski out for another inning of work. He'll face off against Dylan Baker in the top half of this Miami order. Miami looking to avoid a three-game sweep here in the conference opener. Luke, one batter at a time. That's the theme here in the bottom half of the ninth, but it all starts with Dylan Baker and the bottom of this Red Hawks lineup. Yeah, and Dylan Baker's been a guy who's been producing. He's put the ball in play all three times, a couple of hits. 2-0 here to Baker. Said you'd not like to have anyone besides Evan Applewick mm -hmm. lead off, but having Baker, Applewick, Lester as your guys do up, I think is solid in this inning. A 2-0, misses. And if the red light wasn't on already, it's certainly on here. Oh, yeah. Zinski throwing a little harder in this bottom of the ninth. Getting a little juice. Rio's in there for a called strike. Took a little off there on that 90-mile-per-hour fastball. Here comes the 3-1. It's a walk. Ooh, it spoke too soon. Got the black, 91, and our track man confirms it. Spoke just too soon. The payoff. Dylan Baker flares it out to right field. Pike moving to his left. Gloves it for the first out. So from a walk to a fly out. 
and that was a strike on that 3-1. So nice call there by Linton. Now we'll see Evan Applewick. Applewick has reached aboard twice, once via the walk, once the hit. And he falls behind 0-1 on the fastball. Zinski throwing a lot of heaters. Buddy pulls the string on the slider there, 0-2. Oh the 0-2 taken for a ball. Close take there from Applewick. Brings the count to 1-2. Applewick sends it for a ride down the right field line. Garrett Pike going up against the fence, falls down to his knees, but makes the catch. 343 down the right field line. Garrett Pike falling down in the warning track, making a hell of a snag for the second out. Wow, yeah, and I really thought too that he might drop that on his way down. Looked a little bit shaken up initially, but popped right back up afterwards. That's an excellent catch. And now Parker Lester with two outs, down four. Toledo looking squarely at a sweep over Miami. The 0-1. Swung at from Lester, he's late. Now down to their final strike. Cameron Zinski. Gets the sign from White. Misses upstairs. I think he tried to almost quick pitch in there. You'll see that sometimes when you know you're going to a fastball, just trying to draw off the timing. And Lester already getting ready in the box. Here's the one, two. Another fastball that misses up, 91 on the gun. Two, two now here to Lester. Zinski kicks, deals. Lester flares one into right center field over the glove of Brian Fry for a base knock. Thought Fry might have had a chance at that. But Lester with a base hit. Not done yet. McDonald. Had a home run his last time. Comes up. They're going to need more than a big fly. And it can't go understated. As this game progressed, Miami was seeing the ball well, just didn't reciprocate it in runs. How many balls have gone against the warning track or been stung well right at somebody? McDonald foul tips it. It's one and one. The infield shifted over to the left side of the field. Lester staying put. He's not afraid to run. But there's no chance for him. A check swing. They look down the first base line. Ben Levin says, no, he did not go. So we'll do it at two and one. Zinski comes set. Foul tip. Caught by White. Two and two. Two, two, two away in the bottom of the ninth. Pass ball. Not only runs the count full, but moves Parker Lester up to second base. McDonald one for three. The home run. The warning track fly out. He's walked and grounded out to the pitcher. That bunt all the way back in the third inning. The payoff pitch. Slider that rides up and in. A walk. We'll bring Cooper Weiss to the plate. Tying run still on deck. 
But the Red Hawks at least making it a little interesting here with two on and two away in the bottom of the ninth. Cooper Weiss sends one for a ride down the left field line. Konzak working to his right. It's a line out for the third and final out. And this game ends as it was played on a warning track flyout. Toledo gets the sweep. They win 7-3. to three. They score seven runs on ten hits. Miami, three runs on nine hits. They had one air. Tyler Chadwick is slapped with the loss. Matt Lolito will get the win for Toledo. But Miami falls to 2-14 and 14 on the season. The Rockets improve their record to 9-5. and five. And through this series, Miami scored just seven runs. Luke, it wasn't the pitching that did them in. It was the sticks. Yeah, and that hasn't necessarily been the story for this team throughout the early part of this season. We've seen a lot of high numbers in the run column on both sides. But something different here in Mac play where it really matters. This is where the games tend to be a little more competitive and just a struggle for these Miami bats. They scored three runs in this game. I thought it was definitely their best day at the plate. Just some tough luck in this one, which I mean, I'm sure frustrating for them on the tail end of a three game sweep. You probably didn't feel that you were as deserving maybe in the first couple of days to be in a game as you were today. But gotta get right back to it. You got Northern Illinois coming up this weekend. Toledo's a team that is gonna finish near the top of the Mac and not necessarily an excuse for this team at all, but Northern Illinois, not a team like that next weekend. It's a series that the Red Hawks really need to win in a couple of midweeks. Coming up south of the Ohio River against NKU and Louisville. And you mentioned they're going to cross the Ohio River. Fifth straight loss for Miami this week. Lost to Wright State, traveled to Dayton, both losses. And then got swept here at home against Toledo. And you mentioned Northern Kentucky. They'll play down there in Highland Heights on Tuesday. Then they'll go down to Louisville on Wednesday. Playing a midday, a matinee. Kids against Day. Against the Cardinal. Kids Day. Louisville, yeah. Talk to Jack Kaiser. He's the TV voice of the Cardinals. Says that's the loudest their stadium gets all season, and the Red Hawks are going to be in that hostile environment next Wednesday for an 11.30 start against the Cards Kids down Day. in Louisville. Kids Day. I think that that's like a field trip then, yeah. right? Like, yeah, you yeah, get out of school, all that. Should be nice. fun. Nice. Should be fun. Then they'll come back home against Northern Illinois next week for a three-game tilt. But from Oxford, Ohio, McKee Field at Hayden Park, this is Reed Mouse signing off. And we thank you for listening. Once again, like the stream, subscribe to the channel. But for Luke West, Poli, and Casey McCollish, to their producer today, we thank you for tuning in. This has been Love and Honor Live on Chatterbox Sports.